Welcome back, everybody. This is episode three in our new playthrough of Grand Tactician Civil War. This is the Confederate 1863 campaign. We're still in May of 1863, and we're still waiting for our first uh, units to arrive. The Army of Tennessee actually just connected with George Thomas's Army of the Cumberland. Uh, and was going to engage in battle, but I gave a withdrawal order, which means we're going to have to give up some territory. But as I said in the previous two episodes, uh, we are just going to withdraw for now until we get some of these reinforcements. You can see one, two, three, four, five, uh, just these nine brigades alone, that's 27,000 men we are waiting on for the Army of Tennessee. Uh, so those are going to make a big, di big difference when they start to arrive in the coming days. And then we can think about giving battle at that point so we're going to go ahead and start withdrawing oh they're going to hit again you can see we've only got 21,000 men but we've got another 27,000 on the way and that's going to make a huge difference uh, so i'm going to go ahead and start issuing withdrawal orders back to chattanooga for our army i think that'll make a big difference if we can just put a little space in between us and the Union Army while we wait for the reinforcements to arrive. Okay, this may be one we're going to have to try and fight. This is going to be the 19th Corps starting out, uh, but then, of course, you can see 13th Corps, 17th Corps, uh, and the 15th Corps. Total of 71,000 men against just 29,000 that we've got available to us in the Vicksburg area, the Army of the Mississippi, and the Vicksburg Garrison. Uh, it's not a lot. And it's not going to allow us to do a deploy to defend order. Uh, so we're going to have to fight this one out. I don't know how we're going to hang on against Grant. We may lose Vicksburg. All right, the only thing I can do here is force him to attack me. So we're going to uh, combine our forces. We're going to put them all the way back here as far as we can go. Uh, right here against this water. And I'm going to just dig in with parapets if I, if I possibly can. Uh, which I think I should be able to. And we're just going to take our chances. And if he defeats us, fine, but it won't be without having heavy, heavy losses inflicted upon him in the process. Okay, now we just watch for him to make his way across the battlefield. Uh, I'm about as dug in as I can possibly get. We've got ourselves earthen parapets all the way along our defensive line. We've got artillery behind us all the way along the line i've got a couple of brigades of reserve that i can plug in somewhere if needed but not a whole lot and we're just going to wait he's going to gather up all of those victory points which is going to help him a lot because of the um, inability i have to really go out there and capture those but it looks like he's close already he's over at champion hill so i'm hoping he'll hit me soon and we just got to inflict massive casualties on him, cause some units to rout before he's able to bring sufficient force to bear on me and dislodge me from the position. All right, here he comes. It's almost 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Looks like he may hit me over on my left side. Guns are going to open up. He's just getting into range for the 6-pounder field guns. The other is not yet. Man, we gotta upgrade these guns. Six pounders. Ain't gonna cut it. I need to move these guys over. Oh no, they're firing. Okay. And now our rifles open up. Got Mississippi rifles there. Enfields, a little bit out of range for them, but those Mississippis, they've got nice long range. Of course, he's going to try to get around my flank. He's got the numbers. Oh, he's going to shift everybody over that way. Well then, I should have built more parapets over here. So here's what we'll do in the meantime. We'll at least put up some breastworks to compensate. We're going to send some artillery over that way. And 
and both of our brigades of reinforcements because he, he looks like he's planning to shift the whole army right in over here. Right now it's just mainly our artillery that's doing the job. I'm going to bring some more artillery up, see if we can get some of these other guns in position to start firing as well. Get a little more artillery firing on his position. Uh, we're trying to finish digging in over here. It looks like we're still working on the construction. I think we've got it done now. Just waiting to see what he's going to do. I think he's waiting until his reinforcements arrive. He doesn't have them all yet. Uh, right now he's only got about 25,000 men. Honestly, I probably, especially with my force and guns, I probably could smash into him and win this battle. And I'm wondering if maybe that's not the better part of wisdom to do that right now before he gets those reinforcements. How soon are they coming? Let's take a look. Oh, they're actually about to arrive. Uh, at least the 15th Corps is. Yeah, we're probably better off to stay where we are. Well, he advanced one brigade up to the corner of my line. I'm really not sure why he chose to do that. Except maybe he was trying to recover some of the guns that he lost. I don't know. But we're going to make him realize the error of his ways in doing so. Because I've got these Mississippi rifles right there. And they've got a nice long range. They can reach out to where these guns are. We do have a couple of patron units that are already here. Um, let's take a look and see where they are. No, I thought we did. Oh yeah, Monroe Guard. They're the first ones. And they're right here, kind of in the quiet part of the line right now. Man, I really don't know what he was thinking with that. Let's take a look at the situation now. He's still not showing those reinforcements, but we know they're there. We just haven't spotted them yes, uh, yet, so I guess that's why we're not counting them. All right, so we reached the end of the day. It's time for redeployment. You can see he redeployed over this way. Uh, so it seems like we're probably okay to keep doing what we're doing unless he's going to be attacking from this side. I thought about building out my parapets here, and I still might uh, just to give myself maximum flexibility. I'm going to go ahead and construct additional parapets just so I've got somewhere to move into in case I need it. And then we'll probably extend this line down here a little bit. And then that way we've got places we can move all the way along the line if necessary. I don't know if we can not build them into the woods or what. Okay, here come Union reinforcements over on my right. It wouldn't let me build parapet into these woods here so we're going to go ahead and send these reinforcement units on onto that flank that's kind of my one weak spot and he may be moving in to try and hit me there let's see yeah you can see he's racking up the objective points now but his morale is significantly lower than mine so if we can just route a few units i would imagine when he does assault me he's going to take heavy casualties because with those points from the objectives, he's probably going to fight a lot longer before he withdraws. So I may have a difficult time because of that. We may need to bring some, some guns over. See, these 12-pounder howitzers just don't have enough range to be able to reach him out there. The 6-pounders do.
All right, we built parapets, or not parapets, but breastworks over here on this right side where it wouldn't let me put parapets. We've got more Mississippi rifles here. Uh, so the, the good news is that once again, that's going to give us a nice range advantage with our guns, or with our rifles. We don't have any heavy guns. I wish I had some rifled guns over here. I'm move these six-pounders up a little bit. We're inflicting casualties. It's just the problem is he's just got so many men. He's showing 86,000. I don't think it's that high, but it's still pretty darn high. And he's got 200 guns as well. If he gets them all into position and starts shelling me, I'm going to be in trouble. Okay, here he comes. He's sending in a couple of brigades. We're still trying to get this unit into position here. They're not showing as in the parapets, but they are. Uh, they're protected as in the parapets. Our guns are firing. This is uh, Bear's Brigade. Moore's Brigade. Should inflict some pretty heavy casualties here. This is what we need him to keep doing is attacking with just small pieces of his force. Yeah, baby, pour it into him. The Battle of Vicksburg. Just got to keep an eye on casualties. You can see the balls flying in on me, though. So he's. You know, this is something we didn't face in an 1861 campaign significant amounts of enemy artillery. We do see more brigades pouring in behind them. I would guess it, at some point he's going to really hit us. And I do have reinforcement brigades moving into position. Let's bring these guys up here so they're a little closer. So far, so good. Let's see. Oh yeah, 2,200 casualties to 600 for me. Just need to keep that up for uh, a lot longer. Keep the percentage higher on his end. Make him really pay for every inch of ground that he tries to take. He's going to have four full brigades up here. Oh, he's moving more into position now. I need to be ready to move up with more. Seth Barton, Martin Green. Green's actually got a sharpshooter perk. We gotta get our commanders over here so they're a little closer. I didn't mean to move that whole division. I thought we were just moving his, uh, I was just trying to move him personally. I'm going to move Pemberton over here, too. All right. I'm just going to keep an eye on Moore. He's the main one I'm worried about. Well, Bear's lost about the same number of men now. He's bringing more and more men into position. Green, I want you back up there. Alright, we've thrown one of them back. But you can see that the uh, the numbers are moving more and more in his direction because of those objective points. Is that one of mine? Oh, did I accidentally remove a brigade from the field? No! Somehow, I gave a withdrawal order. I don't know why, 
but let's make sure that doesn't happen again. Oh, you know why? Because we're sitting right on this exit, and I accidentally clicked on it with my division. Darn it. That's what that was, is I withdrew that unit, and that's why it shifted further his direction. And shoot withdraw as well. So I, I lost a battery and a brigade. Darn it. When I was trying to move my general, I accidentally gave a withdrawal order to that division. Oh, that hurts. That drops me by 3,000 men. Keep doing your thing, guys. So far, so good. Man, he's got so many brigades, though. If I were him, I would just be throwing everything I had at my lines and just overwhelm me. The good news is I'm right by my exit. So if I do need to get out of here, I can, but I'll inflict as many casualties as I can on the way. We broke another one of his brigades. And I need a lot more where that came from. 4,500 casualties to 1,000 for me. Percentage-wise, not much different, though. All right, Moore's low on ammunition, so we're going to have to pull him back. He's down to 16 rounds. Let's pull him back to a reserve position. Bring Cockerell up into that spot. Right in there. We did break a couple more units. Some of those will probably recover, though. He's sending a couple more brigades now. That's exactly what I hoped he would do. Send a few at a time instead of hitting me with his whole line. It's kind of a Maurice Heights type of situation at Fredericksburg. Lest you think a general would never do something like this. It has happened many times. Keep an eye out. A bear's down to 29 rounds. It's 12 in the afternoon, so we're doing okay in terms of uh, supply. Just wondering why he hasn't decided to launch everything he's got at me. 5,300 to 1,344. But again, that's pretty consistent in terms of percentage. So I'm not going to gain a big edge in terms of the losses. We'll go up to 10 times speed and see what happens over time. He's bringing up more batteries. How's A Bear doing? He's down to 16 rounds and he's lost 500 men, so I think we should probably go ahead and bring Seth Barton up into that position. We'll drop A Bear out. Of course, Barton's taken longer to get there than A Bear did to get out. I probably should have waited a little longer give Aber the withdrawal order. Come on, Barton, all the way up. Let's get Carter Stevenson over there. So he's a little closer to the division.
Yeah, those victory points are really killing me. But I expected that. Come on, Barton. Alright, 6,000 casualties, but ours are starting to mount, too. Who was wounded? Sheffield. The Monroe Guards commander was wounded. He's over here, isn't he? Oh, no, he's right up here on the line now. Oh boy, it's getting hot on the line now. Now he's going to start probing around my flank, and there's not a lot I can do if he does that. We'll stick A Bear out there. He's low on ammo. A lot of fallen boys in blue out there. Once this battle's over, I need to upgrade the artillery especially. There we go. Broke another whole division worth of men. Morale's just not going down by enough, though. Taking out 7,500 Yankees. I had given A Bear orders to get over here, but he didn't do it nearly fast enough, and now we've got a Yankee brigade that has broken through on the left side. How many men's he got here? 1,500. Charge. We've got no choice. Got to charge into him. Hope that's enough. Probably isn't. We're going to have to send Moore's Brigade over here, too. One A Bear, this may decide the battle. If you can drive them off. Not sure that he can. No, he's not going to. These are only six pounders. That's not going to help either. Oh, did it work? It did. Oh, beautiful. A bear saves the day. All right, get into the line. Thankfully, that was an experienced unit, and that seems to have made a difference. Uh, now we're going to have to ask him to do it again. Helps on the way. Jeez, this is crazy. Nine thousand casualties for the Yankees now. Ten percent of his force, nine percent of mine. I'm down to just twenty five thousand men. Boy, losing those three thousand men really messed me up. Double time, boys. Come on, guys, get there. Oh, A Bear. Dude, promotion time for you. My goodness. What a job. Broke two brigades that had come through my lines. Fantastic. 
700 losses, low on ammunition, tired, and saved the left. Of course, now that I sent those guys over there, I have no help on my right. I'm going to pull Featherston from the center. Of course, that may trigger him to assault my center. I don't know. But he's got a major attack coming on the right now. You can see his morale is down to 37. But those objective points. Oh, 81. That means he's going to take a ton of casualties before he withdraws. Come on, Featherston, get there. Get the guns turned. We are not well protected over here. I'm just watching now that I pulled that unit out of the center. I'm just watching for any movement over here. Man, just taking a lot of casualties. My line's so thin. Ten thousand for the Union. Three to one casualties, and yet it's not going to be enough. Featherston up and pull Tillman back. Getting toward the end of daylight. It's May, so we'll probably go to at least 7 or 8 o'clock. Who's getting low on ammo now? Vaughn. Come on, Vaughn. Hang on. Seven rounds left. Oh, boy. I don't know how much I'm going to get resupplied. He's going to try to hit me with his cavalry right on the edge of the map. I'm going to bring these guys closer just so if Featherston breaks, Tillman will be right there. Jeez. 3,800 men, 11,000 for him. The percentage is just staying right at the same, though. Man, look at how quickly Featherston's casualties are mounting up. He's already lost 600 men. That's the spot in the line where he's probably going to break me. All right, how about Ship's Brigade? Let's send them over. We'll put Tillman on the center. But we need fresh troops over here. Because if Featherston gets to half... Oh, and Featherston was wounded. Once he gets to half of his men lost, he's going to break no matter what. My goodness, look how fast that's going up. And they're not seeming to, to break themselves. Oh, and He's got artillery right up on the line on me. I'm up to 4,400 losses now. I'm starting to see a climb on my side. And we're just not going to break him. I think I'm going to have to pull out and give him Vicksburg while I wait for more men. Featherston broke. I'm going to go ahead and withdraw. He hasn't even touched a lot of his own forces yet. 
I did what I could. I inflicted some decent casualties. But I've got to withdraw now. Ended up with 6,400 losses in the end. Took out 12,000 of his men, but 6,400 out of uh, 30,000 30, is just not good. Okay, we're in retreat. Not sure where we're going to go at this point. Except probably across into Louisiana. Oh, who broke? The Army of Mississippi disintegrates. What? Oh, boy. That's a nightmare. So what does that mean? So I think they're just going to reform somewhere, I guess. But look, you can see here. Yeah, they're, they're going to kind of reform later. But we basically lose them as an effective fighting force for the time being. Oh, boy. What a mess. What an absolute mess. All right, so we're going to bring some of the Trans-Mississippi Department up. Uh, it's going to take a couple of days for Richard Taylor to get his orders, but his 17,000 men would be huge for us near Vicksburg right now. We've also got 10,000 men under Theophilus Holmes up here in Little Rock. We're going to pull them down. We're just going to start consolidating our forces. I may even send Beauregard north. I don't know yet. I kind of need him to hang on down here uh, for the time being. We're working on trying to get these reinforcements in to help out. It looks like Army of Northern Virginia is starting to get some of their men. Uh, we've got the 2 137th. We've got the 36th Georgia now. Who else do we have? I'm just looking to see who our um, patron units are that have arrived. Gonzo's Gators, Holly's Hurricanes, Virginia Legion. So we're starting to get some men now. Maybe enough to put up a fight. We've been giving a lot of withdrawal orders, though. And you can see they're still withdrawing. Second Corps only got 10,000 men. So we're, we're about to lose Richmond, but we're going to consolidate over here. Incidentally, this is kind of in the Appomattox area over here where we're pulling back to. So there it is. They've taken Richmond. Uh, we kind of expected that. We also lost a naval battle in Galveston Bay down in Texas. We're finally getting the uh, Trans-Mississippi Department on the move. It's taken a while. It took a while to get the orders out to them in the first place. We do still hold Vicksburg. The Vicksburg garrison fell or uh, withdrew. But we're going to move them back in. He hasn't actually hit me there yet. And it looks like he's kind of kept from going at me full bore over here in northern Georgia as well. We might fight on the Chickamauga battlefield if we get a battle there. But we're going to give Lee time to consolidate, rebuild, get some of these recruits in, and then we might have a shot to try to deal with the Army of the Potomac. So I've gone ahead and eliminated D.H. Hill's Department of North Carolina. I've merged all of his brigades into the core of the Army of Northern Virginia. Uh, just so that just give us a little more bang for our buck where those uh, folks are concerned. I think we're at the place now where we can start queuing up some more recruits. Uh, the vast majority of these units are either in the Army or getting close uh, within a few days or weeks. Uh, to the point where I think we can go ahead and start recruiting some more. And then hopefully, when we get back into combat, it'll be a much different story. Here's the current situation. He's up to 429,000 men in the field. We're at 244,000. I've got about 15 to 20 more patron units to queue up for recruitment, so we are making progress on that. It's just that because they take so long to recruit, I'm not queuing them up all at once. I'm waiting until some of them are in the field before I start recruiting others because I just don't want to have 40 or 50 units that we're waiting on because we'll end up with a bunch of empty divisions that I've got commanders for in the field that aren't doing anything. And the other thing is we're waiting for a lot of the disabled men to return to the battlefield. Uh, how are we doing here on 
Okay, the Army of Eastern Louisiana is making progress toward getting north. Um, that's only 9,000 men. The Army of Western Louisiana is the one that we're sending up to try and support what's happening in Vicksburg, get them within reinforcement range. We've also got men coming down from the District of Arkansas. I'm hoping that's going to be enough to get this done. I'm also hoping he's not shifting men from here over toward Vicksburg. So it may be a situation where we might want to make a move now on Nashville while we have the forces to do it. I've got 21,000 men here. Let's move them up. Oh, man. Why is Bragg still in command of that army? Hold on. Let's take a look at his stats for a second. Army of Tennessee under Braxton Bragg. Commander. He's got a lot of fame, but no leadership, not much initiative, and no cunning. You're gone, buddy. Wh who do we have that can replace him? D.H. Hill. Look at D.H. Hill's stats. All right, D.H. Hill. You never did a whole lot of great things late in the war, historically. But we're giving you command of the Army of Tennessee. What about the Corps commanders? Leonidas Polk's terrible. The bishop that was almost blown in half by artillery let's get a better corps commander in there than him who's up here at major general magruder's not bad not a lot of initiative mansfield levels decent levels way better than who we got in there now so polk's out what about william what about william hardy he's decent enough to keep in there wheeler's a cavalry commander and he's doing pretty good earl van dorn Nathan Bedford Forrest obviously is great, and maybe we should put more under him. Why do we have infantry here? That I think I accidentally did that. Oh, that's just an empty division, that's why. Okay, um, I think we're going to put all of Van Dorn's guys under Forrest. Just eliminate Van Dorn from the equation for now. So we're doing some reshuffling here. Let's look at our core commanders in the Army of Northern Virginia. Yule's decent, not outstanding. Hill's pretty good. Longstreet, pretty good. I think we'll sit tight on all of them for now. All right, we're giving Beauregard orders to move on Fort Walker and its garrison of 250 men. We need a win. We need something to go right for us right now. And I feel like that would be a good opportunity to do that. The Army of the Ohio has got 70,000 men, though. I don't know where they're spread out at the moment. But we're making a move toward this reserve corps right here of the Army of the Cumberland. Just because I want to put some pressure on him so he doesn't just send everybody to reinforce the troops that are attacking Vicksburg or about to do so. He's building supply depots all over the place. We're moving forces, but they're just taking a long time to get where they need to go. 447,000 Confeder er, uh, Union troops in the field, 250,000 for me. I'm going to go ahead and queue up a few more. Okay, it looks like a lot of the Union forces have moved down toward poor Jeb Stewart's cavalry division, which I don't know if I'm going to be able to get him out of here or not. Um... I'm going to try to find a way to get him through. But in the meantime, uh, let, let's look at the actual strength of the Army of Northern Virginia. We've got 24,000 effectives for Longstreet. Oh, boy. Yeah, get him out of there. Break contact with the enemy. Just move. Um, so Longstreet's got 24,000 effectives. Did we just lose? Yeah, he disintegrated, which means he'll probably reappear somewhere else. Um, I can't quite see the other ones. There's Yule. He's got 19,000 effectives. Well, sieges are always a really good way to level yourself up. Uh, and we've been able to do that here with Beauregard's unit. So I'm going to look for something that's going to help us with the siege. Uh, here we go. Heavy Siege Artillery. 
because we're, we're going to have other forts that we need to take with Beauregard's force. Uh, we can auto-resolve the assault, or we can kind of hang out. I think we're going to have to auto-resolve this. Let's see what happens. We're taking some casualties, but I think we'll probably win this. It tells us the odds of victory, 61%. Man, he keeps ramping up his recruitment just as fast as I am. So interesting. Um, we won the victory at Fort Walker. So we've taken that fort. That's excellent news. Uh, we're definitely going to reinforce that bad boy. Uh, let's go ahead to the Fort Walker garrison. We haven't really looked at our garrisons a whole lot. Uh, just because I've just had such a priority on being able to reinforce our armies that we haven't really looked at trying to do anything with the garrisons. Here's Fort Walker. Uh, we're just going to recruit whatever we can that's quick and easy here. Uh, let's see. If we do it automatically like this, then it'll just do it hopefully from the nearest available units. Or the, uh, the most quickly recruitable units, I would say. Um, so South Carolina and Georgia. So that'll get us some men there that can hopefully hold that fort. Um, we did see the Army of the Potomac headquarters pull back from Petersburg. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and hopefully grab Petersburg back at least, which is a major rail hub, and it's a pretty big deal to be able to take that. In the meantime, we're about to run into the Union Army here outside of Nashville. They're constructing supply depots. 21st Corps, 15,000 men. 14th Corps with 24,000. And the 20th Corps with how many? It's kind of hard to see because of the way this is. Um, with 16,000. So about 55,000 men there. Plus the Reserve Corps with 6,000. So nearly 60,000 men. We can, we can compete with that, I think. But I'm going to wrap it up right there. We're going to have some major battles on our hands. And hopefully, I feel like we are at the place where we've probably taken our last backward step. I can't guarantee that. But I feel like we're going to start getting the men in place to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Union and maybe start driving them back a little bit. We can't step back any further. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. We will be back in two days with the next episode. Thanks for watching.